creatine, you mentioned it there. There's, um, you know, creatine's had its moment. Uh, it's kind of had a resurgence in 2024. It was back around when I was like 18 years old, first getting into the gym and you had all of these myths about creatine and, you know, your mom was scared about you taking it because it was going to give you kidney stones or all other kind of manner of things. And now it's back again in the mainstream. And I've even seen some recent studies where they're putting like elderly women on as high as 10, 15, 20 grams a day. I know you've been rabbit holing creatine a, a little bit. What, what's the story with creatine? Essentially, no downsides. You know, I mean, if you have kidney disease, uh, maybe, but it, it, creatine is a is a phosphate intermediate. You know, it's a storage form for phosphate in the body, which helps with energy utilization and regeneration of ATP, which is our essential fundamental energy currency in the human body. There, there are essentially no downsides to creatine in humans. I mean, certainly there are dose effects, and if you take too much, you might get GI distress, but. Mm it pretty clearly seems that around five grams per day for both men and women is an optimal dose. And you can obtain this from red meat, go figure, something that's right. been at the center of the human diet for hundreds of thousands, if not millions of years. Um, there's conflicting data that I've seen on how much creatine is actually in red meat. Some studies would suggest one to two grams per pound. Other studies would suggest closer to four grams per pound of red meat. It probably has to do with how healthy the cow is or maybe what the cow mm. is eating or how cooked the meat is. I think the creatine is gonna be somewhat degraded if you're cooking the meat. So if you're eating a pound of raw meat, you're certainly gonna be getting more creatine that could be more bioavailable. I'm not advocating for eating raw meat. I, I cook 99% of my meat unless I'm at a restaurant eating carpaccio or beef tartare, but the, most of us don't eat enough meat to probably optimize our creatine stores. Right. I used to when I was on a carnivore diet, you know, two, two and a half pounds a day. Now I'm closer to one and a quarter pounds a day because I'll have some milk in there and I'll have fruit and I'll have other foods, things like cucumber, which is actually a fruit. And, and so I supplement with creatine and I feel a marked benefit. I think there are essentially no downsides. There are a few caveats there. There's an asterisk or two to consider. Sometimes when people take creatine, commonly, this happens if people eat more meat as well, you will see the creatinine on your blood work go up. Now, creatinine is our surrogate marker for kidney function in Western medicine. It's not toxic in and of itself. It's not a pathological substance. It's a substance that we sort of use to estimate the glomerular filtration rate in the kidney. And so when your creatinine goes up, your doctor may think that your kidneys are working less well, which is false if you have simply increased the amount of red meat yeah. or creatine in your diet. The workaround is to ask your doctor for a test called a cystatin C, which is not dependent on the amount of meat you're eating. So yeah, I've seen my creatinine go up slightly with creatine supplementation, but I take five grams of creatine every day in my morning raw milk. So my morning thing, which I'll tell you about is raw milk or raw kefir from a local goat farm. I'll take some whole package from hardened soil supplements. I have raw honey, which is glyphosate free from lineage. And then lineage now makes a, a creatine. So I've been able to create like this whole suite of products that I can curate. And I really believe in the value of and the quality of, and that goes into my raw milk in the morning. And that's the first thing I do. So yeah, creatine yeah. in the morning. How would you rate my breakfast? It's very similar. So it's raw milk. I put in a scoop of ABP, which is heart and soil's animal-based animal protein. protein. Also amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Colostrum in the collagen in the whey, uh, five grams of creatine. I think I said the two raw eggs, but if not, we'll add two raw eggs. And I personally go for maple syrup, whip that thing up and chug it. Sounds pretty solid, right? Sounds pretty amazing. Do you use the whole egg or just the yolk? The whole egg. Uh, I, I don't know about the raw white. I know. I've heard this, right? What is it? The protein? The, what is it? Avenin? Avenin. Yeah. yeah. It seems to do do okay with me though. My digestion's pretty on point. My energy's good, but I do think it can have some issues with uh, certain individuals, right? Biotin. So avidin binds biotin, I believe. Yeah. And you, there's a lot of biotin in the egg yolk, but I think that most people would probably be better eating their egg whites cooked rather than raw. Yeah. Because you're cool. not, I don't know if you'll be able to utilize the biotin that naturally occurs in the egg yolk if you're eating it with a raw white. Just a thing to consider. So I'll take a, I'll take a, a B plus on that breakfast. Yeah, right? it's pretty good. I mean, okay. or you could just, so what I would say, Steve, is do the raw yolks. And then if you want to just boil the whites or something and you want the protein, yeah. Yeah, cool, cool. All right, friends, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Radical Health Radio. We got a fresh new podcast for you every Wednesday. If you enjoyed the show, consider liking, subscribing, reviewing, and rating us on your podcast platform. It helps to spread this message of Radical Health. We'll see you next week.